I wanted to, this is PT Pop here with all four lobes of my brain tied behind my back. You know, I, I don't know. I want to talk about this call center thing again. Talk about why I started working in them. Many years ago, a friend and I, we had been friends since high school. He took a job with Progressive Insurance and I took a job with a small telecom company. And he started working at call centers and I was working in a little call center. Like the call center I was in was like a six man call center. And I had assigned clients that called me. And it was a piece of cake. It was a great job. It didn't pay a lot of money, but you know, it paid the bills and stuff like that. But honestly, you know, I was living in a fantasy world because, you know, I don't know what it was like a progressive because I've never worked there in the call center factor. Um, but when I left this little company, I'd been there like four or five years and I went to work at a big company. Uh, I worked to work at a place called GTE Wireless, which became Altel Wireless, which became Verizon Wireless. Um, and when I went to work at GT Wireless, it was a completely different beast, altogether different. It was my first experience with a big call center, but I made friends there. I was a lot younger. I was like 27 years old, 28, something like that. I made all kinds of friends. So it, was, it, was, it wasn't as hard to take because you would joke around, you'd make fun of the situation. But my friend and I said, you know, my friend who worked at Progressive, he and I always said, well, it doesn't matter what happens, you can always get a job in a call center. And that's true. And I thought, no problem. No matter where I go, no matter what I do in life, I'll always have a job because I've got these call center skills. But the problem is, is that my first call center, which was a tiny call center, was like a family environment. I knew everybody. Everybody knew me. I knew their families. You went over to their house. You went out for drinks afterwards. There, there was none of this... Um, monitoring of calls and hand, call handle time there was none of this you've been in the bathroom too long you didn't you didn't wipe good enough while you're in there you got to kiss my ass and stick your nose straight up my butt before I'll even give you a bonus there was none of that it was all just straightforward easy going laid back kind of like a family atmosphere but a GT wireless it was an entirely different beast entirely different and that was the first time in my whole life I've been working since I was like 10 years old I had a paper out then when I was in high school, I worked in restaurants and I worked in, you know, a grocery store. And I'd never been written up, never been fired, never been in any trouble. My first big call center was where they monitored the calls. And they sat down with me and they said, if you don't improve, you're going to get fired. And I'm like 27 years old. I'm like, what? I mean, there was no counseling. There was nothing, there was nothing to set me up for it. There was nothing like, hey, we see you're struggling on the calls. Nowadays, they're supposed to counsel you. They're supposed to sit down with you and give you like 90 days to get better. And they put you on a, a performance improvement plan and all this stuff. But back then, they just said, hey, if you don't approve, you're out the door. I didn't look on the phone for like a couple of weeks. I'd never been in a call center like this. And, you know, I always kept in the back of my mind what my friend and I agreed upon is that you can always get a job in a call center, which is true. A call center will take anything that's got a pulse, anything that can breathe. If, if you can walk a chew bubble gum and get a job in a call center. That's a no-brainer. But there's very few people, myself included, that can handle the pressure. Um, when I was younger, it was okay. Because, I, like I said, I had friends. It was kind of a fun environment. I sat next to people I joked around with. But as you get older, I think, at least for me, my mindset changed. And I'm like, I don't have to take this crap from people anymore. You get this, like, righteous indignation, this righteous thought process in your mind. You're just not... I don't care what the customers say to me. It's the fact that internally, the inner workings of the company that you work for is so corrupt, it's so backwards, it's so inept, it's so incompetent, it's impossible to succeed. And you see that they bring people in from the outside and they they help them and they coach them and they get them promoted and get them out of the call center while you're still sitting there pulling your putt. So I started off thinking it would be a career, be a, something I'd always have work in. That's true. Doesn't matter what city you go to, every city's got a call center of some sort. Either I got a flat tire or there's a bad bumps in the road or something. I don't know what it is. And I think it's bad bumps. Good old Ohio roads. I love them. But um, yeah, the call center thing 
I misled myself, and, and I really have always thought I keep going back to them, thinking, well, this is going to be a good career, but they, ne they never are. But that's how I got started. A friend and I got into call centers back in the late 80s, early 90s, and we always thought we could find work in them, and that's what I've always done. If I move to a new city, I get a job at a call center. All right. Have a good day. Subscribe if you like my videos. Like this down there in the corner, wherever the hell it is. Talk to you later. Bye.